me male 29 and my fiance female 27 have been together for four years she has many good traits from being selfless to being generous her absolute weakness is seeing others struggle she always tries to comfort and sympathize with everyone about six months ago she started telling me about her male co-worker who lost his eight-month-old daughter and how she sympathized and felt sorry for him she made him meals and spoke with him on the phone whenever he needed to vent. It didn't bother me much because it didn't happen often, and I had no intentions of causing unnecessary issues. Just it's my fiancé's nature to help out and offer a shoulder to cry on. This happened out of nowhere. Days ago, I received a 47-second long video via Facebook of her co-worker's car cam showing him and my fiancé kissing each other. I was in shock and took a lot of time to process what I saw. I kept re-watching the video, thinking the person in the car wasn't my fiancé. Plus, I've never met this guy before, but I figured he probably found me on Facebook by seeing my fiancé status as engaged to me. The Facebook account then disappeared, and I couldn't access it. I confronted my fiancé with the video, and her initial reaction was freezing in her place. She was absolutely shocked, and asked, Where did you get this? It showed all over her face. I told her to explain, but she started repeatedly crying, screaming that it was him. He used her after she tried to comfort him for losing his daughter. She said she didn't know he had feelings for her. Although there were signs, she brushed them off, claiming it must have been nothing but attachment after she kept offering him support as a friend. I wanted to believe this is really what happened, but something kept me feeling so angry especially after remembering seeing the video. I told her that it seemed like she was consenting him to kiss her, and she justified it as her getting caught off guard by him and freezing, which she claimed was her only mistake, but she spent too long and didn't even attempt to pull away. After arguing for hours and her repeating that he used her and manipulated her into sympathizing with him, then caught her off guard with that kiss and disrespected her boundaries, she said he probably did this to get back at her for turning him down multiple times. I told her I needed space to process this whole mess. She told me not to leave and that she would report him the next day and insisted that we work this out together, but I decided to leave the apartment anyway. It's been days and I've been lying to my family about our fight after they asked me why I stopped the wedding planning. I found out that my fiancé told them I stopped our wedding planning process and asked for their help after she kept begging me to come home to talk, then offered to meet me at a public place, but I refused. This is a huge deal, and I didn't want my family to influence my decisions, since they tend to apply pressure on me, especially with my fiancé. I feel so devastated, and not sure if I'm being unfair by refusing to believe her claims. 47 seconds of kissing? She cheated. It probably has been for a while, but she told him she was not leaving you, so he sent the video. Also, he had to be pretty confident that he was going to kiss her, being that he was ready with his phone to record it. No way it was the first time. Be thankful this happened before you married her. Same here, like 47 seconds of kissing? If she was caught off guard, it wouldn't last long, or you would see her react stunned or in disgust the moment he started kissing her. It doesn't seem like she was caught off guard with the kiss. He even said he didn't see her interact with him that much. So how or when did it escalate to a kiss? She didn't know he had feelings for her, but she turned him down multiple times. Obviously, there was more than what he knew. OP is naive because he loves her. The first paragraph was solely defending her personality traits and rationalizing how this guy could easily take advantage of her. OP, the only person who has been taken advantage of is you. This woman cheated on you. And as they said, he knew she was going to kiss him because it's happened before and he was ready to record. Now she's trying to use your family into manipulating you to call the wedding back on. Get out and toss her and her crap to the curb. My sister-in-law and her husband always host dinner. They have a teen son, Chase, while my wife and I have two kids, pre-tween Betty and toddler Sarah. During making the meal, my sister-in-law sent Chase to the corner store for some milk. When he came back, he had two bags of sweets with him. My kids immediately wanted some and asked. Chase told them no. I told him that he shouldn't have brought sweets into the house without expecting to share them with his cousins. 
Sarah in particular started throwing a bit of a fit. The sweets were her favorite. I told him again to share. Chase told me no, went to his room and hid the sweets. He was being immature, so I told him to get the sweets and I would give them out after dinner. My brother said to leave Chase alone, he doesn't have to share. I pointed out that he caused Sarah to have a tantrum. He was sent to the store to get milk, not sweets. Sarah eventually calmed down, but after the dinner, she went into another meltdown because Chase opened the sweets and again didn't share. Not one. I called Chase selfish over this, but he just went to his room and locked the door. We tried giving her slices of cake and pie, but she continued to have a meltdown till my sister-in-law asked us to leave, cutting the visit short. We ended up stopping at a store to buy her some sweets. I don't think it was much to ask Chase to share with his younger cousins. Am I the idiot? Edit. Let me clear up some confusion. Chase bought the milk and sweets with his own money, but that doesn't change that he shouldn't have brought the sweets into the house around his small cousins. Everyone knows you don't show sweets to small children if you don't intend to share them because they will ask. If my wife and I came into the house with something sweet, we share with them or the kids have enough to share. OMG lady, you're teaching your kid if she makes a scene, you'll bully your own family to get her what she wants. She's a toddler and it isn't cute and it'll only worsen the older she gets and Chase bought them with his own money. Are you a crazy lady? No wonder you were asked to leave. You're the idiot for fighting with a child over candy. LOL, yeah. Your daughter's problem isn't her cousin refusing to share. He bought the sweets with his own money. He's not obligated to share them with your kids, whether you like it or not. Your daughter's biggest problem is her parents raising her to be a spoiled, entitled brat who throws tantrums when she's told no. I love how your response wasn't to discipline or parent your daughter in any way, but to try instead and parent your nephew, even after your brother told you to leave him alone. You are the idiot in the most significant way possible. Please teach your children that tantrums are not appropriate when we don't get our way. The addition of everyone knows you don't show sweets to small children if you don't intend to share them because they're going to ask is cracking me up. Do you know what you do when they ask? You tell them no like a proper parent. The best part is that Chase's parents looked out for their kid in a reasonable way. Dad told you to leave him alone and mom suggested you leave. You are the idiot. Focus on your kid and your kid's behavior. Should Chase have shared? Yes. Did Chase probably not share because you were harassing him? Yes. Should you be trying to coax your kid out of a tantrum with cake and pie? No. Could you have just walked your butt to the store with your screaming kid and bought them yourself? Yes. Actually, no. Chase was under no obligation to share. I don't know why you guys are so determined to give a toddler candy anyway. If it was my kid and someone else tried to make them share, I tell them to back off and let me parent my kid. The idea that OP's kid and OP thought that the cousin had to share simply because they had treats in their physical presence is messed up. My daughter is about to turn 19 in January. She works 36 hours a week. There have been ongoing issues with my daughter since she started working in her senior year of high school and they worsened after she graduated. She has charged roughly 30% of her monthly income before taxes towards rent. She has a reasonable payment of $312 and we split the rest of the bills. I always felt that she thought the way that this was done was unfair because I pay $65 a month towards rent, but that's because I haven't had a job since 2019. Other than that, I would be paying more. I get a free phone bill, so it's not as big of a deal for me to pay $65 a month. This morning, I noticed my daughter sleeping in again. This just recently became common with her. Last week, she slept in until 10 a.m., and today it was 11 a.m., and this time I woke her up and got angry with her for sleeping this late. I asked if she were sick, and she looked confused and said no. There's no reason to be sleeping in this late when she could be doing something productive. I told her that and asked what she thought she was going to do in life, keep this up, and nothing would ever get done. I know she works a lot, but she needs to get up. I walked out of the room because her reasoning baffles me sometimes. Maybe if she didn't work five days a week, she wouldn't be having this issue. She's not going to know how to take care of herself in life. 
She has an obsession with making money, when regardless of how much she makes, her rent will always be 30%. She pays about $600 a month in total, including $320 for rent, $40 for her phone bill, $70 for electricity, $35 for internet, $40 towards my gas, and some money for cat litter. She has it good. An hour later, she came downstairs to talk to me. I didn't want to talk to her, but she started explaining that she needed the sleep. She needs more to be up and awake. I could understand sleeping in until about 8 a.m., but any later is late. I need her to be studying for her license so she can get her driver's license. I asked her, don't you want to be independent of me? And she said yes, but that she's already very independent because she works and pays for nearly everything. Plus, she's saving for her car and that it may be hard for me to understand because it's been a while and I finished her sentence. Been a while since I've worked. When I worked, I was raising her, the child, but I still managed to take care of myself, didn't sleep in, and got my car. I'm 57 years old. She has a whole life ahead of her. I'm at retiring age, so there's no reason for her to pull that crap on me about not working. I told her that she's 19 years old. She's literally an adult, has been for about a year. I still managed to get up early and I went to sleep at midnight. I told her I needed her to have a car before we moved. And she looked at me and said, if you want to move, then move. You have a car. She didn't say a word to me and she went out the door carrying her work uniform hat. She doesn't work until 3.30. So she's going in early to get away from me, from what I understand. You are the idiot. You haven't worked since 2019. She's fully supporting you and you're accusing her of not going anywhere in life? Your daughter needs to move out and cut contact with you. You sound extremely toxic. Keep this up and she will make sure she's independent of you. Independent and not in contact. Seriously, give your head a shake and exercise a little logic and compassion before you drive her away. Hard, you are the idiot. You sound like a controlling freeloader. Oh, and it's healthy and natural for growing adults to sleep in. And frankly, Considering you pay $65 a month and don't work, it's none of your goddamn business. So what are you doing that's so productive? It seems like you've already messed up your life to the point where you can't work, still pay rent, and are being supported by your daughter, and now are taking out this frustration on your daughter, who is doing more than you. Oh my God, you are the idiot. Are you even serious? Your daughter is 19, working full-time and paying for rent utilities and half of your gas let her sleep until whenever she wants do you know how many parents wish their kids were this responsible also you won't allow your daughter to walk even though she's trying to save for her own vehicle because do you need her to pay half of your gas money you're awful hopefully she will move out of there as soon as possible you sound like a raging narcissist i was doing a study program in vietnam for a while and I had an on-again, off-again relationship with a girl there. She assured me she was on the pill, but I still use protection. She got pregnant and admitted to me that she lied about the pill and tampered with my protection, but she said it like this was a good thing and how we'll be together. I'm leaving Vietnam in a few days, so I just blocked her, and I'm going back to the U.S. She tried to get the U.S. Embassy to get her child registered as an American, I'm not sure how any of that works. Her friends and family contacted me. Though my Vietnamese isn't great, I mostly understood that they were angry and I needed to man up and take responsibility for my actions, blah, blah, blah. I needed to help her get her child to become an American. Instead, I've told them all to kick rocks and I blocked them. She came to my apartment and screamed at me, saying I'm a horrible person. I closed the door. I'm leaving in three days and there's nothing they can do. They're desperate and non-stop spamming me with crap. I don't even know if she's pregnant with my child. She messed around with other foreigners. Still, I think she's hoping I'm the father because I'm American and that's more desirable than citizenship from Chile, Bulgaria, or South Africa. I think I may be the idiot because I should take care of this kid and stuff. So yeah, I guess I might be wrong. Everyone's the idiot here. What she did isn't okay, but what you're doing is worse. Pregnancy is always a possible outcome. 
If it's your child, you're responsible. If you're unwilling to take responsibility, you should have gotten a vasectomy. If you were in the U.S., she could pursue you in court. The fact that you're able to leave the country and leave a child behind, assuming it's yours, is pretty awful. And it's only fair to let women you date in the future know that if they get pregnant, you'll ghost them. Better yet, get a vasectomy. You are the idiot. Did she get pregnant on purpose? Maybe. But if it's your baby, that doesn't matter. You messed around with a local girl who, from the sound of it, is impoverished, which you knew and took advantage of. And now she may be having your baby. Do you want your child to be raised in poverty, like abject poverty? Her family is correct. You need to man up and find out if this is your baby and how you're going to support it. Jesus, dude, try a little personal growth. Your life will be better for it. Not the idiot. And it's infuriating to see so many wrong comments. This is a common scam. Happens to Westerners all the time. Women intentionally get pregnant to use that man, then emigrate to the U.S. It happened to my buddy who worked in Mongolia. The kid was born black. My friend was white. OP did not give her consent to get pregnant. Why should he be responsible for the child when she purposely ruined his protection and lied about birth control to get pregnant? It's ridiculous. Bro, leave Vietnam and don't look back. Yes, this sucks for that child, but you should not be held responsible. Pretty ridiculous how she can terminate and everyone here would support her. But if you abandon the child, you're the biggest idiot. Background. I, 35 female, and my sister, 29, have had a complicated relationship. Our mother left us to raise ourselves to chase men worldwide when we were young teenagers. I, being the oldest, raised my sister. So I played mother and sister to my baby sister. This complicates our relationship. I probably babied her more than I should have, trying to make up for mom abandoning us. Fast forward to this past few years. She has children and a long-term partner. Their relationship is toxic, but I try to avoid getting involved. This story is about my oldest niece that has mental health issues. I've witnessed the situation getting worse and worse the last six months, so I stepped in. I told my sister that I would take my niece to live with me because she was struggling and couldn't watch it anymore. My niece was happy about this, and my sister seemed a bit relieved, and I understand that reaction. However, today, she told me her partner had said he was on the verge of leaving her, and their oldest was causing their family to fall apart, blah, blah, blah. It sounded like a weak excuse to get out of the responsibility of dealing with his daughter's issues. My sister kept going on and on about how she didn't want him to leave or be alone. Finally, I got angry and told her, I don't give a flying rat's backside about your relationship, and he can buzz off, and it wouldn't faze me. I'm more worried about my nieces, and you don't seem to care that she's gone. She went silent and decided that she had to cook dinner. Now I feel bad. I'm only doing what's best for my niece. But am I the idiot for calling my sister out? Not the idiot. They blamed their oldest for the situation? That's so wrong. You are 100% doing the right thing. Your sister and her man are grown-ups. They can handle their lives while their youngest daughter is in an awful situation and needs all the emotional support you can give her. I cannot understand the lack of parenting commitment it would take to go along with someone saying they're removing the oldest child from home and not fighting it. Neither parent is putting the welfare of the child first. Your sister should be more worried about her relationship with her daughter than with her husband. It sounds like the crappy father was the one who blames the child, not necessarily the sister. Obviously, it's horrible to blame children for the dissolution of a relationship for any reason, but doubly horrible when it's a health issue out of the child's control. The sister may have had her own parent of the year issues, but in fairness, it doesn't sound like she's the one blaming her child. 